Welcome to Factorio for Dummies Part 3. My name is Valerian, and in this video, we are going to go over setting up Steam Power, which should get you into mid game fairly easily. We are also going to go over power mechanics in general. I won't discuss every exact detail and number, but you will have a good understanding of things like how to tell how much power you have and whether or not you need more. Also, things like the exact ratio for steam engines, boilers, and water pumps, tips and tricks about coal and burner miners, and inserters. But before we begin, one quick tip that will help you in this video. We can increase the size of our hotbar in the settings menu like this. So see these four hotbars right here? I used to only have two. All I did was go into settings, interface, go over to the other section, and go to where it says active quick bars, and move the slider over to the right, all the way to the right, where it says four. So active quick bars on the four setting. So when we left off, we got our lab and our factory working. Let's shift focus now to our coal miners. I'm about to share with you a neat trick to make your coal mining electricity free for a while. I will also teach you some fail safe mechanisms that if used properly, will ensure that you have a backup plan if you ever do run out of power. So in our game, we still only have burner miners. You naturally think, well, isn't it time to upgrade to electrical miners? Not so fast. We can use burner miners not only to power themselves, but to power the boiler and the entire grid. With an electric miner, if there isn't enough coal being produced, then the electric miner stops producing because it is dependent upon the electricity made by the steam engine, which is powered by the coal that it produces. The burner miner, however, is not powered by electricity from the steam engine. By setting it up the way I'm going to show you, it will be powered by the coal the burner miner itself generates, so in essence, as long as there is coal in that patch, the burner miner will run. Here's how we set up our burner miners to be self-sufficient while supplying the rest of our factory with coal. First, let's pick up all our burner miners on the coal patch and burner miners we have in our inventory. Place them so their yellow arrows are all pointed the same direction and the miners are touching each other. So. Then place your belts like this, so. Now, when we have all that done, take some burner inserters, those are the black inserters, and place them like this. Face them towards the belt, away from the uh, burner miner. Make, it, make sure the pinchers are faced away from the miner, or the thick yellow line is on the right side of the inserter. Okay, now drop a piece of coal into the miner whose arrow is pointed towards the bend in the belt, like this. So this miner right here, where this little bend is, see there's nowhere like it on the rest of the belt. So where the yellow arrow is pointing towards the bend in the belt, that's the miner that you drop a piece of coal in and that gets a chain reaction rolling. First, the black inserter takes the first two pieces of coal and inserts them into itself to power itself. Then it takes the coal and inserts it back into the miner to power the miner. Then that miner fills with coal and starts giving it to the second miner and this process repeats itself until another miner is running and another and another and so on. And let's watch it work and wait till it's done. Now they are all running and they are transporting their coal onto the belt. Let's belt this over to our steam engine. So first thing we need to do is get an underground belt. I'll show you how to place these real quick. So wherever you place the first piece, you're gonna place the first piece first. See these chevrons, how they're pointed to the right? You wanna place it so that the chevrons are pointed where the chevrons on the belt are pointed. As you can see, the belt is moving to the right. So we need to place the underground belt so that its chevrons are pointed towards the right. Right, because it'll be moving to the right underground and then you come out from a straight line up to four blocks away and you place it when you see the yellow arrows pointing to the right and you left click to place it down. Now an interesting thing happens, if you do this on belt, it'll remove the belts and put them back in your inventory and when it places the underground belt, pretty cool. Now we're gonna finish belting this over to our steam engine. Oh, there, connected nice and neat like that. Didn't even have to move over. So now we're going to pick up the coal box and replace it with a belt. Take that and bam, that's all you gotta do. 
You still want a coal box as backup, so replace the box on the belt opposite the steam engines. So we're gonna put a box like right here, place a burner miner there as well. So the burner miner is putting coal inside the box. We have extra spare coal if we need it for anything. The burner inserters also ensure that if we have coal on the belt, it will start placing coal into the boiler. No electricity required. Now we're gonna go up to the coal field here. Also, you can set up some electric miners in addition to this burner miner setup. In fact, what you can do is place a bunch of electric miners and cut off the burner setup and reconnect the burner setup as needed in case of an emergency so you can just like cut it off right here and it'll build up and it'll just eventually shut down and you can just rely on electric miners until you accidentally run out of power if there's an emergency or whatever then you have this burner set up in reserve and you just simply reconnect the belt and watch it go again and it'll immediately start supplying your boiler setup with coal eventually i would use the burner setup as a backup but for now it's powering our factory so that's good enough for us okay before we move on let's left click on any power pole and go over power usage and see what the heck all this stuff means now i'm not going to go over every button and every number. This stuff honestly looked pretty intimidating when I first saw it. Reading this is so much simpler than it looks. All you need to know is this. At the top left, look at satisfaction, this word right here. If the bar to the right of the word satisfaction, this bar right here, isn't green and full, then that means we are out of power and need to build more power producing things like steam engines. And really, you could almost leave it at that. However, let's say we want to know how much power we have left before this happens. The bar under the satisfaction bar will tell you that. The smaller the green bar is, below this satisfaction bar, the more power you have available. So with the production bar at the top left, shorter is better. If it's nearly as long as a satisfaction green bar, then you have nearly used up all your available power and will need to, again, build more power producing stuff. As you can see, it's nearing its limit. It's, it keeps jumping up, it's pretty volatile. We definitely need to build more power producing buildings, which is why we're here. That's it, that's really it. You can ignore everything else if you wanted to. However, it is good to know what I items and objects are using the most power. So under consumption right here, this box right here, this tells you what's hogging all of your power. Just look at the top left corner of the consumption box to see what is using the most power. In this case, it's the assembly machines. Other than that, there's really not more you really have to pay attention to to play the game. Now we've got coal supplied to our current steam boiler setup, which just consists of one boiler and one steam engine right here. And we've gone over how to read how much power we are using and whether or not we need to get more. It is now time for us to expand our steam setup and create more power. Remember the simple rule for steam engines. One water pump supplies 20 boilers max. Each boiler supports a max of two steam engines. So that equals about 40 steam engines that this little water pump right here can support. Make sure you are counting your boilers as you set them up. If you go over 20 boilers, you need another water pump, plain and simple. Taking these numbers into account, we can set our boilers up like this. So two boilers, then one space, two boilers, then one space, two boilers, then one space. Then connect them with a pipe like this. The water flows through each boiler to supply the other one and flows through the pipe as well. Now, couldn't we just leave the pipes and string these boilers together without them, like this? And you would be right, that would work, but here's the problem. When we connect the steam engines to these boilers, remember we want two steam engines for each boiler, we won't be able to reach some of them with our power poles. Let me show you. Place steam engines like this. If we bunch all the steam engines together like this and cram them together, in this little compact space. We save a lot of space, but there's a problem. When we try to go hook up our power poles to it, you find that no matter what you do, you can't get these ones on the inside here. You can't cover them with the power field. There will be at least five or six of these that are not gonna get power. See, we can't cover them all with a field, but if you use pipes and place them the way that was shown before, like this, Remember, two boilers, then a space, two boilers, then a space. Just repeat that pattern. And then place the steam engines like this, the one space in between. Then place the power poles like so. So in the center, be between the two steam engines, in the middle, in each space. 
just like that. So now, bam, we got power poles touching all the steam engines. Now they are still not running. That's because we need to set up inserters and pipes. Make sure they are burners like the first one. Let's go ahead and set up the burner inserters like this. So just like the first one. Nice and uniform. And then we're gonna set up our pipes like this. Connect them with pipes again in the empty spaces. All the boilers are connected with water. The less power you are using, the slower your coal will burn up in the boiler. This is why we can just hook them up right away. This lets us set it and forget it for a little while. The coal will burn only in proportion to how much power we are using at the moment. So in other words, set this up and don't worry about it until you see the green production bar in the power pole stats screen I showed you earlier get more than half full. Go ahead and blueprint the setup we just made. That way you can paste another setup later and double your power. And just in case you forgot, you hit this blueprint library and you click new blueprint, hit escape, and then you just hold left click and click and drag and... Bam, just like that. Now you can right click on objects in the blueprint like I just did there to ghost them out and make them disappear. There, so now when we need more power, we know how to get more power. Following this setup, we should not run out of power for a while. In part four, we are going to upgrade our furnace setup and then go over logistic science pack production, otherwise known as green pack production, in the same video or the video after that. If part four is not out yet, go ahead and subscribe and hit notifications to know when I I upload it. By the way, I have a Twitch channel. Stop by and say hello sometime. We also have a Discord and we are active. Come join House Valerian. If you want to support my work, I have a Patreon page. Go ahead and check it out. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.